Hello, this is Father Vasilios Basikiros with another episode of Spiritual Enlightenment on NGTV, New Greek TV. I've spoken to people uh, in the streets and also at church and uh, people that I get online. Uh, they come on my Facebook and they send replies to these shows. Uh, they're being well received. I hope that you enjoy them. We try to make them as well as we can with filled with information uh, that can help you in your life and also that can clarify some matters pertaining to our faith. And you know, always I like to do a book review of just a couple of books uh, that if you choose to read or give them away at Christmas as gifts to people or to yourself that you'd like to learn some information about the church and what you can uh, uh, see uh, of the wealth that we have that if people have written even in modern old days or also in modern contemplative days. One of those books happens to be a book by Timothy Ware. It's a very old book. It has been written uh, three or four or five different times and revised. Uh, if you can, it's one of the, I would say, full of information, historical information about the Orthodox Church. And that's the title, the Orthodox Church. And his name is Timothy Ware, but we know him also as Kalistos Ware. Uh, he was a, he still is, a professor at Pembroke College in Oxford University in England. And uh, he was an Anglican priest, and he converted to Orthodoxy. He taught uh, uh, Byzantine history and church history. And as he delved more and more and more into our history, he decided to become a priest and to turn over as becoming a, uh, uh, an archmandrite. And then after that, he became a bishop, and now he's a metropolitan. So you can look him up. He wrote many, many books about our church. But this one is filled. This is the new edition. You make sure you buy one that says new edition because the past book that was given, that was written out, that was also revised uh, very moderately with not a lot of revisions, uh, this one has the fall of Russia and the Iron Curtain and all the rest of the churches. So it has that into it. So you can read what was going on in Russia after the fall of communism. Uh, it was, it's a great book. I know a lot of people use it for uh, classes in uh, colleges and universities, not just in, in theological institutes, but uh, in regular classes. I know Father Robert Stephanopoulos always uses this in his class at St. John's University, in his uh, class on Orthodox theology. It's a great book. So if you could pick it up or give it to someone Christmas or whatever, please do. It's, it's, a, it, it's packed with information, really very, very pertinent information that I think will clear up a lot of areas that people have these think, thoughts about that and they think about uh, how the church was and how it grew. Uh, another set of books that I think are very, very useful. Whenever I have conversion classes, uh, I always try to uh, give out these books. They're by a wonderful man who we know very, very well, uh, Tom, Father Tom Hopko. Uh, there are four books all together, and these four volumes have uh, a, enumerate so many different areas of the church. It's one book, the first is, is one is on worship, the doctrine of the church, the Bible and the church history, and also spirituality. So these four books uh, I try to give to people who convert into the church, into our church, that can at least in their life go back and read uh, things that they were thinking about or things that they wanted to find out about without having me close by. Uh, we used them when I was attending when I was attending St. Vladimir's Seminary, and it's a really, really, very good book. So these these four volumes, they're not very expensive. I think they're about forty dollars. I think from St. Vladimir's, but they're excellent. Uh, so if you can, please uh, think about these uh, books that I reference here, that can give you uh, more information and more readings that you could get deeper because uh, into our faith and what we believe with, and with getting rid of what we try to interject within it that other people have told you. So if you can, please 
uh, take, make use of these. Uh, today, as we were talking about the church, we, we talk about saints of the church. The saints of the church are not worshipped, as some have done in the past. They are venerated. We venerate the churches. We know that many churches, like my own, uh, takes the name of a saint or a prophet or someone who did something uh, miraculous in the church. One of these groups of people is called, are called, Cosmas and Damianos. And these two people were very, were raised in a very virtuous family, a very pious mother, Theodota, who raised them as, as Christians and to be as good Christians would be, that they would respect the church, they would respect the faith, they would believe in the faith, and they would do all those things that are necessary. Remember, there are two components to being a Christian. The main two components are our relationship with God, each man's, human's, individual relationship with God, and also man's, human's relationship with humans. So we have these two dynamics. And with these two dynamics, we go on our life. That's what Christianity is. We have these both at the same time within us that we have to practice. And many times, uh, as we do these, we pick up and become more virtuous. That's what we're, we're called to do. And the only way we can attain and possess the Holy Spirit, besides baptism, we get it at baptism. We know that. But many Christians in the beginning who are converting were given the Holy Spirit first. And then later, after that, they were baptized. And you say, Father, why did they do that? Well, if you ever read in Acts, the book of Acts of Luke, as we call it, the continuation of Luke, the practical application of orthodoxy, of Christianity in the first century, you read that they were given the Holy Spirit first so that they could do miracles, so that they could see the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells within them once they receive it from the apostles. So the apostles are giving them the Holy Spirit. It's ingratiated upon them, through them, by God. And what happens? They become these people who are now in grace and in love with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is active in their life. Why? So that they could have faith. Faith. So faith is one of those things that we see that we try to grow with as we get older, once we start to realize our baptism. When we're young and little, we don't realize that baptism. We really don't. It's very difficult for us to understand it. So what happens? They receive the Holy Spirit. They'll do miracles. They'll do these wonders. They'll be able to bestow them on other people themselves. And then they're baptized. Not all were done this way, but many so that they would believe that there is something going on, something mystical, not magical, mystical within them. So, Cosmas and Damianos, and they remember there are three groups of Cosmas and Damianos. One in Rome, one in Asia Minor, and one also in Rome also, they say there's another group. So there are these groups of individuals who were called, named after Cosmas and Damianos, as saints. Both of them, we know, were physicians. Both groups. These two groups, main groups. And they did miracles. But what happened to the ones in Rome? Their teacher, who taught them, became very, very envious and jealous of them. And as the writing goes about them, what happens is that their teacher starts to 
really, really be so upset that they are doing these miracles, that they can actually do these things that he can't do, of course, because he's a pagan and they're Christians. And what happens? He starts to work and weave a web behind their backs to try to get them into the Roman uh, courts so that the Romans can do away with them finally and martyr them and kill them because he was jealous. But this jealousy goes beyond jealousy. Envy, as I said before in my other shows, is a very, very dangerous area to start to dwell into. His envy and jealousy went so far that he wanted to do them bodily harm. He wanted to kill them, but he let the government do it. How many in our lives, how many of us, have ever said to someone that I wish that something bad would happen to them because I'm envious of them? Why don't I have the things that they have? Instead of looking at it and seeing it and saying how great it is that God is working in them. Why? Not just because of a miracle in their business or their work, but that they persist, that they continue to persist. How many of us will go to someone and say, oh, that's a great thing you did. Look how wonderful it is. You have a great family. You're working hard. You're doing your job. You're doing what you have to do. You're trying to live a good life. You're living a virtuous life. You're attending church. You're receiving the sacraments. You're doing all these things you're supposed to do. And what happens? People say, oh, yes, that's very good. And behind their backs, they curse them. Not only that, they want to destroy them. They want to destroy them. We hear this all the time. Well, there was a man who once wants to sleep one night. Before he fell, as he fell asleep, he had a vision. And God came to him and took him down into Hades and into hell and showed him where he was going to be because of this is the same thing that he did to everyone. Anyone who progressed, anyone who went further than what he had or had more goods or had more money, whatever it was, more fame, he tried to destroy and what happens? He wakes up down in hell. And there's a huge cauldron there. And that huge cauldron is boiling. And he hears people screaming out of the cauldron. And on top of the cauldron is a cover. And there are demons on top of the cover pushing the, the cover down on the cauldron. And he turns to God and he says, God, is that where I'm going? And he says, no, no. These are people that are not as bad as you are. He goes, oh, so he feels better in a way. So he goes on to the next one. There's another cauldron there. And he gets to the next cauldron and there are people around and around and there are demons with arrows shooting the people. And he says, am I going there? He says, no, no, no. We have another place for you, but I'm just showing you what could be here. So he goes to another place. And then all of a sudden he sees another cauldron. And the cauldron is bubbling and the steam's coming out. You hear the cries and the yells. And all of a sudden, he says to him, he says, is this where I'm going? He says, no, just watch. So he watches. There's no demons around. There's no cover on top of the, this huge cauldron with these people in it. And all of a sudden, he sees a finger coming out of the cauldron and another finger coming out of the cauldron, another hand coming out. And all of a sudden, he sees a head coming out of the cauldron. And as he sees the head coming out and his person is almost out of the cauldron, he goes down. He gets all of a sudden gets taken down in there. And he says, God, what happened? He says, he was almost out. He says, I know, this is where you're going. He says, this is where the people that envy what you do and want to destroy you, that don't want you to get ahead of them. So he says, well, who pulls them down? He says, they do that are in there because they don't want to see you progress. That's what happened to Cosmas and Damianos from Rome. And that's what we do today. We do this to each other. Instead of supporting each other, instead of seeing each other and helping each other, 
we would rather pull each other down. And not only that, destroy the other person. This is so far from a Christian mentality you cannot understand. The church and Christianity is made up of the new reality. And this new reality is what Christ has given us. And we are in his body. We are the body of Christ. So remember, when people progress, when people proceed in their life and they, get, they have other things, they start to move forward, it's because of God's grace and their hard work. So may God bless you. May you always remember Cosmas and Damianos and these people who gave their life so that they may do God's will and that other people can convert to Christianity and see their wonders that they did. All in the name of God and His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.